September 3rd and we're having more rather hot weather for us anyway. It's about 11 a.m. and it's around 26 degrees in the shade so I'm sure by mid-afternoon it'll go into the low 30s somewhere. It happens to us every year when they start getting tropical storms or hurricanes down south it shoves the hot air up this way so can't complain I guess I'll complain nothing about the cold this winter. But anyway I have picked all of the tomatoes that are ripe today and I think I'm going to turn them into a tomato sauce and can it. I had thought about just canning the tomatoes and then I thought, well, all you do with them once you can them is you open them up and turn them into a sauce, so why not make a sauce and then can it? So that's what I'm going to do and I'll show you, well, the sauce that I make anyway, not, not any particular recipe here. But I thought I would show you the different kinds that I grew. This one is Mennonite. Uh, Rob, the old gardener guy in Finland, sent me the seeds and uh, it's a lovely big tomato. You can see there's some splitting on top. Always seems to happen to me if I ever manage to grow anything that large. I've been waiting for it to turn red, Rob, and it didn't. <laughs> it just kept getting more orange and it's fully ripe. So I went online and checked and there is an orange Mennonite, so that's what that is. I think the little seed packet that you uh, sent me those seeds in along with several other things that you sent me, I appreciate it very much. I think this might have been the seed from Halvor uh, in Norway. Anyway, I I'm going to use it in sauce, but I want to save some of those seeds to try to grow a few more of them next year. I've got two that are ripe here, the same same thing, about the same size, a third one that's ripening, and that's all I'm going to get out of it for ripeness. But there were four or five others that were almost as big and developed blossom in rot. Many reasons for blossom in rot. I don't know. There were a few of the other kinds of tomatoes that have an occasional blossom in rot too. It can be irregular watering or not enough calcium, which means you should add more compost. Whatever. Try try harder next year. And this is a gardener's delight. And Brendan sent me those seeds. Now, gardener's delight grow lovely long trusses of, of fruit, and and it looks very beautiful in a long truss. I can't show you one because every time one ripens, I pick it and take it in the house and eat it. So anyway, that's. That is one of the gardener's delight. Thank you, Brendan. These are an F1 hybrid, just called Roma. And uh, they're an Italian sauce tomato. I, I know they're supposed to be much larger than that, even this variety, because earlier on I picked two or three and had them in sandwiches or whatever that were practically the standard size that you see in a produce department for an Italian sauce tomato, but I have great clusters of them that are, are this size and more in the hoopos to ripen. I'm not certain if this is Monticello or not. It really is the only tomato they have shaped like that. The rest of the tomatoes on that particular plant were shaped pretty much like this, which is a defiant, an F F1 hybrid. But uh, I had great difficulty getting Monticello to germinate. I kept trying to germinate two or three seeds because they only wanted one plant and uh, it wouldn't happen. So I planted every seed that I had left and I got several to germinate. I know that I put at least a couple of them in the hoopos, but I've lost the dame tags. So I'm not certain if that's a Monticello or not, but I won't be growing them again because they just won't germinate for me for some reason. And the only other variety that I should have here is a seed that uh, uh, Brendan sent me again called Britain's Breakfast. Uh, I did manage to get some to germinate. I saved what I thought was the best looking plant, put it in the hoopos, and I managed to kill it, Brendan. So I, I'm not getting to see what Britain's breakfast might be like this year, but I still have lots of those seeds left, so I'll try again next year. Well, I'll give you a few clips now of making the sauce that I make. Not very difficult. The tomatoes are all washed and sliced up, quartered or whatever, depending on the size of them, I guess. So I'm about to start making my sauce heating up this large skillet, adding a generous amount of olive oil. It's nice to be able to do this and everything that's going into it is out of my own garden. Brag, 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 but that pleases me to no end. This is, I think, about three of my shallots. Um, I won't really be giving you quantities here. It's, when I make a sauce, I just make a sauce, I guess. I make it the way I like it. If you see something I'm putting in that you don't care for, 
put less or don't put it at all. I'm going to shut that off for a second to give the shallots a chance to start to cook a little. Before I add the garlic, I'll add some anchovy paste. I buy it in a tube, adding quite a bit. I wouldn't add this much if I was just making a small batch of sauce, but if you've never used anchovy paste or anchovies in your sauces, give it a try. Uh, can't say as I care for an anchovy just out of the can type thing, but it just adds an interesting background flavor. You don't really taste it as being being fishy once it's been cooked. I said everything going in was out of my garden. Well, obviously the olive oil and the anchovies aren't. This is four cloves of the uh, northern Quebec variety of garlic that I grow. They don't say it's an elephant garlic, but I sort of think think of it that way. Very large cloves and not terribly strong, but a nice, nice mild garlic flavor. Nice aroma coming off of there already. And as you know, I like things a bit on the spicy side. This is a tablespoon of the uh, dried Thai chili peppers, uh, skins and seeds and all from, from last year. I didn't have to grow any this year, probably won't have to grow any next year. I've got so many dried, but uh, I'm not certain how many bottles of sauce this will make. The canner, I think, holds nine. Uh, nine in one layer. It says you can do two layers. But I did that once and broke a bottle, so I don't do that anymore. So I don't know if I'll get eight or nine jars out of this or not, but uh, anyway, that tablespoon will give heat, but not that much when you dilute it all that way. Now, start adding the, uh, the tomatoes. Sure, I think maybe just handfuls at a time might be the easiest way, I guess. I have this huge bowl here that's full, and I will certainly won't be able to add them all at once, but I'm thinking I'll be able to add them as they cook down. Probably use them all in the one saucepan. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm, I have cut them into pieces, uh, but I haven't peeled them. And I haven't taken the, the uh, stem in core, I haven't cored that out or anything. And I'll show you why as this process goes on. But I, I using a, uh, a French kitchen mill. Um, putting the sauce through the French kitchen mill, which will remove any of the stem ends that are left behind and will reserve all of the skins behind and a lot of the uh, seeds will be removed as well so it makes it much easier less work to to prepare anyway well i won't make you sit here and watch me do all this i'll come back when i've got this reduced down i'm going to add some water as well to uh, get it sort of boiling down a bit i don't want to get it too saucy because there'll be a lot of moisture come out of the tomatoes here as we go along. I'm sure the camera will start to steam up as I do this part, so I probably won't get to record very much of it, but I did manage to cook them all down in the one uh, skillet here. I added about a cup of water to get started with, and after that it's just all natural tomato juice that's come out of all these different kinds of tomatoes. It's a bit on the watery side right now, but I'm thinking Putting it through the mill here, uh, and some of the pulp going through and whatever will thicken it up. If not, I can always cook it down a little bit more. But so far you don't seem to be completely steamed up, <laughs> maybe a bit. This uh, French kitchen mill is a wonderful thing. I've used it many times for many different things. 
lot of a lot of jobs very easy. I'm using it over top of a, uh, a pressure cooker uh, with a lid, of course, but just because the mill fits perfectly on it, I have a larger stock pot that it doesn't fit on it. So if, if that should get too full of sauce, I'll just dump it over into the larger stock pot. Well, all I do now is I dump this pulp out and start again. So I'll bring you back when I've put it all through the mill here. And something I meant to mention a little while ago is that uh, Mennonite orange tomato. Oh, is that ever good? <laughs> I took one big slice of it for a sandwich and it completely covered the slice of bread, one slice. Delicious tomato. I've, uh, I've saved all of the seeds. I've got them in a little container fermenting right now. And uh, if I have enough, I'll share some with you. Well, if you can hear the gas flickering away there, I have the uh, canner on with the water heating up in it. Um, I have fresh herbs to add, but I didn't add them during that cooking process. This is basil, a lot of fresh basil. And a lesser amount, didn't measure either one, so I can't tell you how much, of fresh oregano. And the reason I didn't add it in the original cooking phase there, because it, it practically gets, it gets cooked again when it's in the canner, and I thought that would probably cook the life out of any fresh herbs that you put in. There wouldn't be any flavor left. So they're in the sauce now. That's all the sauce there, by the way. I didn't need to go to a larger stock pot or anything. And that is uh, a good thickness, I think. I like that. A good usable pasta sauce, at least I hope so. And I probably noticed that I didn't put any salt earlier, and that's because I add the salt when I'm uh, doing the bottles up. That way you know how much sodium is in each one. A half teaspoon for pint size, 500 milliliter bottles. And once again, I'm using a non-iodized sea salt. Now, tomatoes are an acid food to a certain extent, but you still add some extra acid. These can be canned in just a hot water bath with the addition of lemon juice, and it always, for some reason, specifies that you use the bottled lemon juice. Why you wouldn't use fresh, I don't know, but it always says to use the bottled, so that's what I use. And in each uh, pint, 500 milliliter jar, it's one tablespoon. I'm starting with four jars here. I'm not, I think I've probably got more in there than four jars, maybe five or six, but I'll start with four anyway. So there's one tablespoon of uh, the lemon juice and a half teaspoon of salt in each of the jars. And now you fill them to within a half inch of the top. Like I'm going to do mine under pressure, uh, just because it's faster. If you're doing them in a hot water bath, uh, after it comes to a full rolling boil, you continue to boil for 35 minutes for pint jars, and 40 minutes for quarts in the uh, pressure cooker once it gets to 11 pounds pressure it's only 15 minutes so. and I think safer the pressure cooker is getting it to a much higher temperature so even though you've added acid and it is a low acid food I think it's probably safer well I won't make you watch me fill all these jars I'll bring you back and show you how many I got before they go in the canner well, I got six pints full, and they're in the canner here. I'll put the top on the canner and uh, follow the instructions for my canner. I won't get specific because it will be different for yours if you use a pressure canner. And if not, as I said, you can do these safely in a hot water bath. You just have to boil them longer than they will take in the, in the canner here. And I have a seventh jar that's about three-quarters full. I just put that in the fridge. I won't can that. I'll, 
I'll use that in the next day or two. So I'll show you these when they come out of the canner. Just out of the canner, and one of them already did its ping as the top on it sealed. The instructions always say to leave them undisturbed for at least 18 hours until they have completely cooled and sealed before you move them. So I do try to leave them at least overnight. Also, I always now, I didn't used to in the past, but I always now use new lids. I don't have to use new rings, but I never reuse the lids because you have to worry about whether the one that's been used before, whether or not it will seal properly. So six pint jars of what looks to me like a good pasta sauce. I'll know better, I guess, when I use the part bottle that's in the refrigerator. Well, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you enjoy a little episode, and maybe you'll make yourself some pasta sauce.